Hello everyone, on my last episode, I launched what I call the SUV, Space Utility Vehicle, and now it's time to start refueling it. I'm going to do this first mission here, will be with the space plane, and this is by far the heaviest launch of this plane ever. It's got nearly a full-size fuel tank in there, so set the brakes, throttle up, get everything up to maximum power, release the brakes, and here we go. that doesn't stop Jebediah from doing a little uh, showing off. Now, I'm not sure how much fuel I can dump into that vehicle, so in case I'm able to top it off, my very next mission will be to launch another utility vehicle uh, into orbit that the SUV will then rendezvous with. So this plane also has a crew module and two crew members in it uh, that will pilot the SUV should I'm able to uh, top it off on this single flight. Okay, you're going to see this at uh, some of this at three times speed because this took a long time to resolve itself, and I don't want to make that uh, you know the primary video here the longest one. So I hook up the fuel line, okay. Climb on into the SUV just to keep him safe. Now here, it's been a long time since I've transferred fuel around, and I think I actually shift clicked. Oops. Okay, that's bad enough, and I know these things will generally oscillate until they tear themselves apart, so I think, man, I better disable these engines real quick, because that's what I used to do to avoid this sort of thing. And then things look okay, so maybe I should just transfer the fuel and not worry about it. And, uh-oh, I shift-clicked again, and this time the SUV's engines were disabled, so what happens? Yes, you guessed it, we have a merry-go-round. Okay, well, let's just transfer everything here. Go back into fast speed. Just transfer everything over, and then we'll figure out a, figure out uh, how to unhook. And yes, I did click through quite a few parts while these things were spinning around. Hey, this music actually sounds pretty good at fast speed. Right, I remember that you could just use TAC Fuel Balancer, which makes things a lot easier, not having to click on parts as they go flying by you.
Okay, now to unhook. And I think I've since learned that you can just select the pipe and unhook. You don't need to go EVA, but I went EVA, which is like doubling down. Did not think about this. Back to uh, normal speed here. And now that I'm on EVA, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I probably just stranded this Kerbal in orbit. By the way, this Kerbal's like one of the red shirt Kerbals. He's, I can't even remember his name. Inconsequential. It's not Bill, Bob, or Jebediah. They, of course, are all safely inside the uh, space plane laughing at all this. And now I'm realizing just how dangerous this is. If I get hit, could get killed, could get flung off into space. I could run out of life support, I could run out of uh, RCS, you know, before help can come up here and rescue this poor guy. If this ever happens again, I know exactly what I'll do. I'll just send him right to the center of the uh, uh, the pipe, the part that's not moving. And then head him out along the, ed the um, what do you call that? the radius of the circle until the plane shows up and then jump into the bay. But in any case, it takes many tries to get this right. And I thought for a second about reverting, and I'm like, no, nope, I think I'll just hang in here. It was a practice run after all, so reverting is perfectly legit. Just trying to get into that tank, oof, or into that cargo bay rather. And right now I'm probably pausing, trying to think, am I doing this the right way? Is there some easier way to do this? Of course, I could also have, uh, whoop, there go the solar panels, and there's the unlink right there, finally. I probably also could have disabled the uh, space plane's engines and enabled the SUV engines and given them a small burst too to uh, equal this whole thing out. Or did something similar with the RCS. And from here it's pretty mundane. Switch to the two vessel vessels, stop their rotations, and then climb back in. Alright, let's get back to our space plane launch. Okay, let's switch these rocket engines over to rocket mode. Or these saber engines over to rocket mode. Do our boost up to our uh, suborbital apoapsis. Yeah, I am burning a bit high. I know that's kind of a waste of fuel here to burn at 20 degrees uh, angle of attack. However, I don't want to spend the next 15 minutes coasting up to uh, the apoapsis. I want to get there a little bit quicker. Okay, this is a little while later, and I have circularized and started to do the rendezvous stuff and then this alert came up from uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock saying that a probe needed my attention. Uh, this is actually not the probe you saw me launch before in a previous episode. Um, I started looking into the OKS MKS modules and these a whole different resource system so I took that same probe, took the Keythane sensor off of it and put on the uh, planetary scanner from MKS. I think that's what the part's called. And launched it and I don't remember why the video didn't come through. Um, but anyway, it was completely mundane. It was mundane launch. Um, so here we are setting up. You gotta set these up for a polar orb, polar orbit so that as Mun or the uh, or Minmus rotates underneath it, you end up scanning the entire planet. 
Of course, this takes a while, so we're going to watch this at, uh, I don't know, three or four times speed. And also my audio cut out. I do not remember why. I'm still pretty new to fraps. Maybe I uh, muted the computer's volume and um, didn't realize I was also muting what uh, fraps is recording. So once did the initial burn, I got to set up the circularization burn and then set another alarm clock for that. Okay, now the rendezvous went horrible and this video is already getting long so I basically skipped most of the rendezvous stuff. So here we are coming in. To the SUV and this is also I think at two, maybe three times acceleration. And for some reason I had a hard time getting these two vessels lined up perfectly. I was trying to get the SUV position directly over the cargo hold. Didn't quite do it. For some reason I couldn't get the camera angles just right. That's why you're seeing me fiddle around with them. that's good enough. Let's go EVA here. Hook up this pipe. And this time be very careful not to hit the space, space or, um, shift key. away for safekeeping. Pump some fuel over. And this is where I realized that the SUV does have a very large fuel tank in it. I thought I was going to get a lot more in there. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I got what, four more of these space plane missions? At least that one went, went without a hitch. Time to disconnect. Let's get prepared for deorbit. I always think it's really neat how you can orbit in what seems like such slow motion right around another vehicle. And the moment you start to do a deorbit and you see just how quickly the other vehicle just zips away from you, you realize how fast you're truly going. I didn't even fire up the main engines for this, I just used RCS. Alright, 
alarm clock lets me know that it's time to circularize. Get the scanner working. And of course I can't help myself. I really want to uh, see what resources are out here, so I'll turn this thing on and have a look-see right away. Of course, got to shut everything down first. Not much else is going to happen with the satellite. Yeah, look at all that neat stuff right there in the walls of the um, walls of those craters. Okay, here we go. So at this time, I'm going to set up my trajectory marker to be pretty far away. I'm going to basically aim for the eastern edge of the continent just to the west of Kerbal Space Center. And my plan this time, because I had such a hard time with the reentry heating last time, my plan this time is to I'm going to try to do more in the upper atmosphere, slow down as much as I can. And I'm going to, um, so that's going to, of course, going to provide a whole lot of lift later on. That's why that trajectory is so far west of KSC. So fast forward here to where I'm starting to make turns. And I'm doing these turns at like 43,000 feet, which hardly has any effect at all, but every little bit helps, I believe. So now I've done this with a fairly light aircraft and this is of course is several tons heavier because I have the crew module and an empty fuel tank sitting in there. And what's going to happen here is that um, the extra mass of course is not going to slow down as easily which means I have to withstand even more heat. move the air brakes up to the back of the aircraft or along its back I should say right between the air intakes right there hoping to protect them more So all this pulling back I'm doing up here at 31,000 feet, my atmospheric drag is still like minimal. Oh, there it goes. Now it's starting to increase. Right on cue. It's that 30,000 meter mark is where things start to really happen here. Okay, so where I'm thinking, all right, got to start pulling up here. maybe even climb back up a little bit and does not take long for me to lose another air intake. Yay! So I climb back up here, allow the aircraft to cool down a little bit. Now one thing I did wrong with this, which will come back to haunt me, is I closed up, or I didn't give like one last burst of sunlight into those batteries. which will haunt me here in a few minutes. Okay, back up at 30,000. See if we can slow down for more. Okay, starting to fall again. Of 
This is how I'm going to do it next time. I'm just going to keep doing a little dip, get some reentry heating, get some slowing down, pull up, let the plane coast back up to an altitude where, you d where it can cool off, and then come back down and do it again. It's kind of a tedious process, but it should be safe. Now that explosion is not the ladder, it was something inside the cargo hold, or some kind of a bug. I don't know what uh, blew up there, but whatever it was, it was inside. Perhaps it was one of my cargo hold lights. Okay, once again, did another little climb up to 30,000. You can see how far I'm going. I mean, next time I do this, I could probably, I don't know, coast halfway around the world or something. Okay, speed's dropping, getting a little hot, try and turn a little bit, maybe climb a little bit. At this point I'm trying to turn this thing around, head back towards KSC. Okay, there we go, electric charge is running out. And this has never happened to me on a plane. Um, in a rocket, you're toast. You're pretty much toast. I don't even think you can activate your parachutes if your electricity runs out. So I was assuming that, um, it's a quick pause there for something, I don't remember what. Um, I'm assuming that if the electricity does run out, I'm done. I'm going to crash. I don't even know if I can eject if the electricity runs out. I was probably fixing my audio with that pause. Well, that's good because here's where it starts to get exciting. I'm running my engine just a little bit at this point, trying to recharge the batteries. Which, of course, really hinders my quest to slow down. So I'm kind of in a bind. I feel like I can't go down, I can't shut the engines off, can't really do anything. And i got to get down fast before electricity comes out. It runs out, rather. I look, and even though the engines are running, I'm still losing electricity, just at a slower rate. So that's not really helping.
Here goes one of the air brakes. And once again, I'm trying to decide, do I eject? I don't know what's going to happen if electricity runs out. But then again, ejecting at this uh, speed and altitude is probably not very realistic. After all, I'm still traveling at Mach 4. And there's the other intake, and there goes the engines. Great. So now all that speed I was trying to waste is now my friend. I can just see the islands there to the kind of off the center of the horizon. That's uh, the islands in front of KSC. This is pretty interesting how far I have to coast. Ran the rockets for just a moment, because I could still do that at least. All right, 8,600 feet. Speed is... Oh, I can barely read that on my little tiny video screen here because I'm doing this in post, but it's like 400. And then I've got, what, 50 kilometers to go and no engines. Basically, I got one pass at this, kind of like the space shuttle. still carrying a tiny bit of oxidizer and a tiny bit of monopropellant, but at this point, I think I want it. You know, the more mass, uh, the less uh, the air is going to slow me down. There we go. Target that flag. And now it's feeling pretty good. I think I'm going to make it. Nice. Another one of those fights where you just want to take a deep breath. You know, if you're really into the game, if you're really immersed in it. Maybe kiss the ground. Alright everybody, that's it for tonight. Have a great evening. Bye.